right so I wanted to go over my Pelican 1550 case and what I keep inside of it if you don't know what Pelican cases are they are pretty much the standard when it comes to hard cases they are rugged waterproof and dustproof and sure you can buy similar cases like it for a lot cheaper but after dealing with Pelican's customer service I've decided to just stick with them since I got pretty good results when I had an issue with one of their cases and first off, we're gonna have my primary camera, which is a Sony A6300. I could have one with the A6500, but at the time my budget said A6300, so that's why I got it. I did not mind that the A6300 didn't have the in-body image stabilization because I was already planning on getting a gimbal later down the road, so it wasn't a big deal for me. A few of the lenses I use is gonna be this uh, 50 millimeter 1.8, which is a pretty good lens for the for the money I think it's about 300 bucks or a little less you could probably probably find it for a little less somewhere else aside from Amazon but you know that's up to you if you want to look around my primary lens is gonna be the Sony G Master 18 to 105 at f4 this is by far my favorite lens because of its price point and features if you run a Sony APS APS-C frame I definitely recommend this lens because it really does everything that uh wide angle lens or you know you get a little bit of zoom with the 105 and the 18 with being a little bit more wider and at f4 it's not too bad in low light but if you are going to be doing some low light shooting you might want to pick up another lens all right and finally my last lens that i carry with me is going to be this sony 55 to 210 at f 4.5 to 6.3 I hardly use this lens, but when I do, it's mainly for time lapse or if I really need to reach out and get a quick shot. You can find this specific lens um, all over the internet for a lot cheaper than you would if you just buy it new. As we move on, you can see that I carry a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition. This is mainly so when I need to get an action shot, whether that's in the water or outside of my vehicle, I like to have that option available without putting my more expensive cameras at risk. Onto the mics, I use two Rode mics. One is going to be this Rode Smart Lab Plus. This mic works great when you want to throw some dialogue in your videos without having to use your camera shotgun mic. It's easy to use. I can just connect it to my phone and record my audio through there. The second mic I carry is this Rode VideoMic Pro. It's the older version, but still works great. And I chose to use this mic over the Rode Micro because of its high pass filter options. Though it is more expensive, I was able to pick this up used at a decent price. I like to keep my SD cards protected, so I picked up this Pelican SD card case. Same as the 1550, this is dust and waterproof, so if you're working on a paid project, you can trust your cards won't get ruined while you travel and move around your gear and all that. Next, we will talk about some of the ND filters I carry for both my drone and lenses. First, we have these ND filters by Polar Pro. And just like the Pelican case knockoffs, you can find some cheaper versions of these filters, but nothing beats the quality that I found in these from Polar Pro. Getting drone footage midday can sometimes suck from overexposure, but these ND filters have saved plenty of footage, so I definitely recommend buying these filters specifically. Next, we have my lens filters from Altura Photo. I have some for both my 50 millimeter and my G Master lens, which is a 50, oh, I'm sorry, a 72 millimeter. I have gotten great results from these. And at, the, at this time, I don't feel the need to purchase more professional grade filters. These run about 10 to 15 bucks each set and you get a circular polarizing lens, a UV filter and a ND4 filter, which is a pretty good value for the price. A new addition to my Pelican case is the Aperture M9. This little unit gives out tons of light and after some testing I realized that it's well worth the $45. I plan to use this as a practical light as well as a scene light when I'm recording some off-road videos. Hopefully that'll help me get some better shots in low light even when I'm running my f4 lens which is the Sony 18-105 like I mentioned earlier. As far as drones go, I'm running the DJI Mavic Pro. Even though the Mavic Air was a lot smaller, I couldn't justify picking up a Mavic Air knowing I would be losing flight time as well as range. So I don't see myself replacing my Mavic Pro anytime soon. In my opinion, the Mavic Pro is still the best drone out there that's portable and has great features for the price. With the Mavic Pro, I also bring three batteries total when I'm out. 
and I hardly ever use the third one. A few other things I carry with me is a small cloth and brush to clean lenses and filters. And from time to time, I bring my Zion B1, so version one, the older one, which is good enough for what I do. I got it used for $240 a few months back, and you can find them used anywhere from $230 to $280. Bucks. Just make sure you inspect the unit, make sure there's no damage, the motors aren't skipping or anything like that. Um, if you do pick one up and it doesn't come with a small tripod, I highly recommend picking one of these tripods up. This is an $8 tripod and it really makes uh, balancing your gimbal a lot easier instead of having your gimbal tip over while you're trying to adjust your camera and all that. So definitely pick one of these tripods up if you pick up a V1. And that's going to be it. I hope that this video helps you and gives you an idea of how to set up your own case. Thank you guys for watching.